My name is Colby. Welcome to Dishy Tech, where we talk all things low Earth orbit satellite internet. And mainly that's been Starlink coverage because really Starlink is the only consumer option available right now. But that could soon change because there is a new Starlink competitor that is about to be launched from Amazon. And previously it was called Project Kuiper, but they have a new name. They've released some additional information. Some new exciting changes have happened since my last Project Kuiper update. So I'm making this video to catch you guys up and let you know all the big changes and announcements that have come in the last couple weeks. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the biggest change we have to talk about is the new name. So Amazon is no longer calling it by its code name, which was Project Kuiper. The marketing department has gotten involved and they picked a permanent name for their commercial service and it is now called Amazon Leo. L-E-O, that's kind of a play on the acronym L-E-O, Low Earth Orbit. Of course, Low Earth Orbit is where they're deploying all their satellites for their constellation, same as Starlink. Uh, low Earth Orbit for satellite internet has a ton of benefits, mainly reduced latency. It makes the latency comparable to terrestrial internet sources, but also higher speeds and just better performance and coverage overall. So Amazon Leo is the new name of Project Kuiper. They've also got a new website. So previously they had like a random Amazon blog page where they did all their updates that I got a lot of my information from, but now Amazon Leo has its official website, all new branding, new logo, all that sort of thing. So let's check it out. So this is the new Amazon Leo website. You can access it by going to leo.amazon.com and it's pretty basic. Um, it plays right here at the start of a video, which you can also view on their YouTube channel, but it's just a short little video showcasing you some of the uh, use cases for their upcoming satellite internet service. We get some more images, some different information as well, so let's go through all the changes here. First of all, you have three different menu items. You have a personal service business and government, so depending on what your use case is, you can click to learn more information. But if you scroll down, you can see, you know, this is generally just marketing stuff. You know, we all know what satellite internet is, and this just kind of explains how the coverage is going to work, that sort of thing. But we do get a lot more information on the antennas and their user terminals and the speed that they wish to deliver. So if we go into what I think is the most interesting page, which is technology, you can see some different information about their user terminals. So this is not necessarily something new. They've had these user terminal designs for years, but they now have more information. So we know the names of them. So their user terminals are going to be sort of the same as Starlink where they have three different levels. They have Amazon Leo Nano, which is their small portable one, delivering up to 100 megabits per second in a tiny little portable package. And then you step up to their main terminal, which is called the Pro. Amazon Leo Pro is kind of like your everyday dish, provides speeds up to around 400 megabits per second all in a small package as well, just 11 by 11 inches. And then finally, for the enterprise customers, for the ultra high performance customers is the ultra antenna. So this is the big boy. This is designed to support speeds up to one gig per second. One of the things that struck me about the specs listed on this page, especially for the Amazon Leo Nano user terminal, is the comparison with Starlink's mini dish. So this is the Starlink mini user terminal. and. This is Starlink's ultra portable option. This is the smallest of their three user terminals. And the difference between Amazon's lineup and Starlink's lineup is pretty striking. The Amazon Nano, their smallest unit, measures in at just seven by seven inches. And just to give you a, a perspective on that, this is the Starlink Mini, right? This is about 11 by 10 inches. So the Mini, the Starlink Mini, is roughly the size of their Pro terminal, like their middle range terminal. The Nano from Amazon is going to be tiny. I mean, shave you know, four or five inches off of each dimension of the Starlink Mini, and you have the Nano. So just to give you an idea, as of right now, the hardware from hardware comparison standpoint, the Nano I'm really excited for, really looking forward to, because it undercuts the Starlink Mini by quite a bit in terms of size. We'll have to, you know, obviously check out the performance and the power consumption and all that, but it just goes to show you that Amazon is targeting some of the same customers that Starlink is, including some of those recreational camper, portable travel type use cases. 
So that is the equipment. That is some of the new details that you can see on this Amazon Leo website. Another thing that's exciting about this is that we now have a chance to join a wait list of sorts for Amazon Leo. So if you're interested in keeping up to date with Amazon Leo, maybe potentially being a customer, then you can click this little button at the top of the website called join the list. And this lets you sign up either as a personal business or government customer. And this just basically signs you up to their email newsletter. So you'll be among the first to learn about some of their new updates as the rollout and deployment of Amazon Leo goes on. So definitely sign up here if you're interested in becoming a customer eventually, or at least trying it out. Just like we saw with Starlink, it will likely be a waitlisted service. There's not gonna be enough capacity to serve every customer that wants to sign up in the beginning. So likely what we'll see is the people that sign up to this email list are among the first to be invited to try out their service when it launches for consumers. So that's the new website, that's the new branding and everything for Amazon Leo. Next up, let's talk about the satellite deployment because at the end of the day, a satellite internet service is only as good as the satellites that power it. And right now, Amazon Leo is in that mass deployment stage where they're trying to get up as many satellites as they can to get off the ground and start offering service. And they've reached an important milestone. So Amazon in their FCC approvals has talked about uh, five phases of deployment. So they eventually wanna have over 3,200 satellites in orbit in their full constellation, but they've broken that down into about five phases. The first phase is 578 satellites. That's what they need to offer continuous coverage for their first initial pilot customers. And as of today, they have 158 satellites deployed. That's after, after six launches and that means they're over 25% complete with that phase one deployment. And that's an exciting number. Now, they started launching in April of this year, April of 2025, and they've launched at a cadence of around once per month, which is extremely slow, especially if you compare that to Starlink's launch cadence. But we're getting ready to enter what Amazon calls a rapid launch phase, where ULA, United Launch Alliance, is gonna use their Vulcan rocket to send up a lot more Amazon Leo satellites than they previously have been over the course of this year. So previously they've been using uh, ULA Atlas V rockets and even SpaceX Falcon 9, where they can deploy around 24 to 27 satellites per launch. ULA's Vulcan launch vehicle, which they have 30 launches scheduled, will deploy almost double that. So they'll be able to launch not only more satellites per launch, but they plan on launching at a much faster cadence, which means Amazon is hoping to hit that phase one deployment of around 600 satellites before the end of Q1 2026. And in that quarter, they hope to be delivering some of the first service to their pilot customers, which will be mainly enterprise customers, big businesses, things like that, which is another point that I wanted to talk about in this video. They're doing like the opposite rollout of Starlink. Starlink was basically like, hey, we had this new thing, it's low earth orbit satellite internet. Let's just push it out there to like these beta testers, these consumers who are gonna use it for home internet. It's going to be pretty unreliable at first. It's gonna be pretty slow at first. And that's how it was. You know, I signed up in 2021 and I almost never got over hundred megabits per second. There were frequent outages. It wasn't really that great, but it was my only option. So I didn't complain. They've refined it obviously since then. And as of today, you know, Starlink is great. It's rock solid, reliable, and really, really fast and everything like that. So obviously they made improvements and introduced and brought on more enterprise government and commercial customers since then, in addition to their consumers. But Amazon seems to be doing basically the opposite of that, where they're gonna sign up these big customers, you know, enterprise and government customers where who are gonna pilot the service first in 2026, and then it'll eventually expand to consumers where you know you and I will be able to go out and buy Amazon Leo eventually sometime in 2026, maybe even 2027 timeframe. So even though Amazon plans to start delivering service in 2026, I wouldn't hold your breath. Uh, if you're a consumer, if you're a home internet customer or a travel internet customer, you're gonna be probably waiting at least another year or two before Amazon Leo services are available to you. Finally, for this video, I wanted to talk about another important milestone that Amazon has achieved in their deployment of their Amazon Leo constellation. So they've done the first low earth orbit satellite internet speed test of one gigabit per second or greater. Now this may come as a surprise to you, but Starlink with their newest performance antenna that's supposed to be 
you know, one gig capable and all that stuff. Starlink has not been capable of doing a one gigabit per second uh, download speed to a single user terminal as of right now. And that's because they have a limitation with their satellites that are actually in orbit. It's not going to be until the next generation V3 satellites that Starlink is able to start delivering those one gigabit per second speeds to customer terminals on the ground. But Amazon has actually beat them to that. Now there's kind of a caveat, which I'll, you know, I'll get into here in a second. But the big news is that Amazon has successfully tested their ultra you know, user terminal, their, their top of the line model, and achieved over 1200 megabits per second, that's over a gig download speeds on a public internet speed test using speedtest.net. They posted a video of it, and this is pretty exciting because, as I just said, they claim that this is the first uh, commercial phased array antenna using low earth orbit satellite internet to achieve one gigabits per second download speeds, which is exciting. Of course, the caveat is that Amazon doesn't have really any customers using their satellite network, so there's no congestion, there's no capacity issues. These are under extremely ideal conditions, but with all that said, it is a successful one gig download speed test on their network, something that Starlink cannot do at the moment. So now you're all caught up on Amazon Leo. Just to recap here, they changed their name from Project Kuiper to Amazon Leo. They've given some more details about their user terminals. They've achieved a one gig per second download speed result using one of their ultra terminals. And they're about 25% complete through their phase one deployment until they can serve their first customers. So it looks like we'll definitely be getting at least those first pilot customers going online sometime in 2026. And if all goes to plan according to their launch schedule, we should start seeing consumers having access to Amazon Leo sometime in late 2026 or 2027. The time will fly. I mean, honestly, right now with Amazon Leo, it feels like Starlink did back in 2019, 2020, where they're launching satellites, but they haven't offered service yet. And we're just kind of waiting, sitting here waiting to see what happens. But honestly, that was you know five, almost six years ago now and time flies. So I'm sure it, five years from now, the, the game of low earth orbit sa satellite internet will be completely different with Starlink competing with Amazon. And that's just great for you and I, customers. Competition is great. It drives innovation from these companies. It lowers prices. And that's a good thing. I'm not a fanboy of Elon Musk. I'm not a fanboy of Jeff Bezos. I don't really care either way which service I go with. I just want to provide you with the best content possible. And that means covering both services, both Amazon Leo and Starlink, and just making interesting videos about each service and about each company's hardware. So I look forward to covering Amazon Leo and Starlink as time goes on in the future. And I'm excited about Amazon Leo's progress. So I encourage you to go take a look at Amazon Leo's website, leo.amazon.com. Sign up to their email newsletter so you can stay up to date with them and take a look at the technology page. Take a look at those user terminals and let me know what you think. Also, I'd love to know what you think, what their pricing and strategy should be to kind of court some of those existing Starlink customers. Starlink's doing a lot of good things in terms of pricing promotions, completely eliminating the upfront costs in most areas of the US. So they're clearly on a strategy of combating Amazon Leo early on by just eliminating upfront costs and just charging people monthly. So let me know what you think Amazon Leo has to do to compete with Starlink in the US and other markets. As always, I really appreciate you watching. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe so you never miss any of my Amazon Leo or Starlink updates. And I'll see you in the next video.